The buy now pay later firm Klarna is filing for its long awaited IPO. That was last week. And while investors await offering size and share price range, analysts at Deutsche Bank recently valued the company around $15 billion. Klarna also just announced it'll be available on Google Pay for some online retailers this holiday season and for all purchases over $35 starting next year, just a month after launching a similar partnership with Apple Pay. Joining us now for more in an exclusive interview is the co founder and CEO of Klarna, Sebastian. Do the honors of the last name for me. Uh, Semyakovsky, but I can, I've can i heard many versions of that name, so no, I'm not very... I want to get it right, and it's such a beautiful name. Semyakovsky, uh, welcome. Well, actually, it is Polish. It's Semyonkovsky, if you're going to do it perfect. Agnieszka in the back will be very pleased about this. <laughs> Semyonkovsky. All right, you got it. Uh, anyway, listen, this is a, a, a big deal to many, uh, both in the world of those waiting for IPOs, the public markets where we've, there's been so little activity. Um, and you saw Databricks and some of these private companies. Look, they're, they're raising secondaries uh, in the private markets. Jersey Mike's sold to private equity yesterday. Why go public? I mean, people, yes, I said, why is Jersey Mike's not going public? They said, who wants to bother? It's a pain. What would you say? Well, look, I think, you know, as much as people want to, like, put it into a macroeconomic uh, con uh, context, in our case, it's actually been very clear from day one that we wanted to become a global fintech. Global means success in the U.S., and success cannot only be users and revenue, but has to be profit. Uh, and those old prerequisites have now been met. Um, you know, U.S. is our largest market by revenue. And at the same point of time, you know, we're being private for 20 years and had tons of investors in the cap table, obviously providing some liquidity to them and employees kind of makes sense. Yeah. I mean, how would you say the the kind of landscape has changed during that 20 year period of time? Were there probably many other t moments that you considered possibly going public? Why now? Again, because we did meet those criteria, right? I mean, I, I think that the to us, uh, we have the aspiration to build a global fintech and, you know, so, I mean, we serve 80 million consumers now worldwide, and we think that this industry will go through a massive transformation now accelerated by AI. And uh, and you, being a global player in this industry is going to be critical. So these, these, these criteria were super important for us before it made sense to be public. Given you have this kind of high-frequency view of what's going on with U.S. consumers, would you say you expect it to be a strong holiday season? I'm a little taken aback by Target's results and its decline today. Even earlier, we had a segment about how Elf and some of the beauty companies have run into to some trouble. Um, but overall, the numbers look pretty good. What, what do you expect? Definitely better macro conditions in the U.S. than Europe. Uh, but both, I think, uh, markets that we've seen have been a little bit fooled uh, by the fact that revenue have looked fairly similar due to inflation. And mm. so a lot of the baskets that are sold are the same size that they used to be a year ago, four years ago. If you look at our average order value as an example, there, it's pretty much the same. But the truth is there's less products in that basket for the same amount of money. And what you see a lot of those really big uh, grocers, et cetera, is that they may actually sell less inventory, but for the same monetary value. And that's a problem for some of them, because if they see less transactions and less volume shifted through their warehouses, that over time speaks lower uh, scales of efficiency and, and so forth. They can't basically spread out the cost of the same amount. So that's, that's the message that's clearly had from those really large retailers. And I think consumers, hence, are struggling a bit more than, you know, if you just look at the monetary value, it's, you don't see that, but you have to look at the items. 